Okay, welcome to DCTP.TV live from the campus party in Berlin. Matthew, what do we see here? What that is, is a 3D printed mock-up, a replica of a cube set. Um, in particular, one that we built at NASA Ames Research Center called TechEd Sat, uh, Technical Education Satellite. D d is it already flying around the Earth? Um, this particular kind of CubeSat is very interesting because it's one of the first type to be launched from the International Space Station. Uh -huh. It is up there now. Um, in the space station. On the space station, and the uh, uh, thanks to the Japanese Space Agency. And soon, they will uh, put this in a pallet that goes outside the airlock. So the astronauts will put it on this pallet, they'll push it out the airlock, and then the, uh, the satellite, or the space station robotic arm will then fire them out using springs. And then they will orbit the Earth for a few weeks uh, uh, after being literally pushed off the International Space Station. And what do they do, these satellites? So pretty much anything you can imagine putting in 10 centimeters cube yeah. will, uh, uh, is what they do. Um, this particular satellite is a test of many components and many different kinds of design. Um, in particular, inside here, there is a video camera battery yeah. uh, from a Panasonic video camera and the, as a power source. And then here are different uh, solar panels to see if can a cheap off-the-shelf battery. This is all off-the-shelf components? For the most part. Uh -huh. There's some uh, uh, sp satellite space hardware specific on this specific version. Um, for instance, you, the sa solar panels are not off the shelf, per yeah. se, okay. but um, uh, many aspects of it are. Go on, what, 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 kind of, uh, what kind of components do you have off the shelf? In well, um, in this satellite, the main test is actually in the design. However, we have another satellite that uh, is called PhoneSat. Yeah. And that one has a uh, Nexus One, the original Google Android phone that is as off the shelf as you can get, that was put inside the satellite and uh, we'll be testing to see if the sensors for the satellite, the accelerometers, the GPS, the radios, things like that, that are all, literally in our pockets, if they will work in, and be able to, to uh, measure the environment in space. And so these satellites that will be set out from the, from the ISS, their they, they, they purpose is to see what kind of new technologies you can use for satellites. They don't really observing anything like... Not yet. Uh -huh. The point is satellites and getting into space costs a lot of money. Uh -huh. The number one reason is it's expensive. The heavier something is, the more expensive it is. But if our phones, if we take off the screen and we don't need the keyboard, and we have a battery that's you know this size. Most of the electronics for the the be able to do all the cool things with a phone is like in a couple sticks of gum. So if we can replace a lot of this hardware into a smaller volume, we can put a larger camera or a larger other set of sensors inside these smaller factors and be able to do things in space much more cheaply. And and how much is such a satellite if it's fully equipped and, and put into space? So it, another one of those depends. Something like this will cost on the order of $300,000, okay? But that's really, there's no reason for that. The big cost here was actually the wires. There were these custom wires to put in here because of the design of the board, because it's this configuration. However, how many wires are inside yeah. here? It's 300, not- 300,000 if you would produce it by traditional satellite. Uh, if you had traditional, like, had this been from the start, possibly closer to a million dollars. Close to a million. Mm -hmm. And 300,000 is what then? 300,000 yeah. dollars 300, dollars yeah. is for this particular design because it has a, sp uh, a, a wiring harness uh, okay. um, that is very custom built okay. among other technical issues okay. about it that just cost that much. Not all CubeSats will cost that much. There are some that are certainly much cheaper, but um, they're, we're, we're trying to pack in a lot of capability uh, into this experiment. And is it also new that is plastics? Ah, uh, no. Now this is a mock-up. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, the real one, this casing would be metal, um, and then the uh, solar panels would be glass and, okay. and silicon. Now the thing is, is that they're, we're really curious to know why don't plastics work in space? Now, space is cold, unless you're in the sunshine, then it's really hot, and then you have a vacuum. 
So we have these uh, environmental concerns that plastics won't hold up in traditionally. However, nobody's really explored what kind of plastics will. So, and also, plastics will hold up for some length of time. So what if we could get just long enough to do something useful? Imagine taking a 3D printer into space, onto the space station, yeah. and then emailing the design for the satellite, yeah. and then launching the electronic components, at, you know, they're small, and then an astronaut can assemble them together so that they uh, very simply launch them and shove them out the airlock in real time. Very uh, fit, quite fast turnaround. So what do you think, how low can you get with the cost? I mean... I think we can produce a, a functional satellite on the order of a thousand, couple thousands of dollars. So if under five thousand dollars, and you can get uh, orbital imaging systems. You can get pictures of Earth. You could get internet in the sky. You can get all sorts of different functionality. And uh, the lifespan of these kind of satellites is shorter, right? It's uh, much shorter. They're much lower to the Earth, so they'll burn. They'll burn up uh, faster. Okay, but since okay, let's say we you can get the price down. Uh, you have a shorter lifespan, but you can apply much more satellites. Yeah. And, and what kind of new applications do you have in mind? Well, for here, those? here's the beautiful thing about it. I don't know, but neither did Steve Jobs. He had some of an idea when he came up with the iPhone, but his, his technology was to pack as much functionality into that one device and then create the App Store. And here's the beauty about this. If we can create an app, a satellite App Store where everybody can start programming functionality into these satellites once they're in orbit. Think of using Arduino. There's a company out there on Kickstarter, it's called ArduSat, where they want to, they're, they're going to launch a CubeSat same size, but it's going to have a series of Arduinos inside of it. So at, with all the sensors that they can put inside this shape. So now release it to the world and say, what can you do if you had a camera and a radiation sensor and a radio and all these other things? What can you do with it? What can you program with it? That's the value behind what we're trying to do, is let everybody else come up with these neat so ideas. So you, you, you dem democratize the production and the design That's of satellites? That's exactly right. It's democratizing not just the design, but the tools used to make it. So one of the things we're doing at NASA Ames is working with this group out of Massachusetts Institute of Technology. It's called a Fab Lab. Okay? Yeah. And the Fab Lab has standardized tools, like a laser cutter, a 3D printer, mills, Uh, routers and other com computer controlled equipment that can make anything. Now it's uh, just about anything. These, these tools cost up under $100,000, $150,000. There's about a hundred of these shops throughout the country, or excuse me, throughout, throughout the world. And if we can open source the designs for these satellites so that anybody can make them and then eventually find a way to launch them, NASA will try to help where we can. Um, or the Japanese law or the European Space Agency, then we have a whole global community of satellite designers that can come up with stuff that NASA won't so the, on their the own. So the only real bottleneck is to, lo to get them into space? Major bottleneck is, is that flight up there. However, there are also companies working on dedicated launchers for things this small. Yeah. Right now, most of the big rockets are as big as this, you know, many meters in diameter yeah. when they don't have to be. And so oftentimes these are on the spare, these are pushed out on the spare weight of a rocket, but we're coming up with many new companies, at least in the United States, that are dedicated for this size. And, and what, is the, what are still the greatest challenges you have to overcome for, for off-the-shelf technologies? Is it temperature and, and radiation? Or? Well, we're finding out temperature is a problem, and in particular how temperature cycles. Yeah. Yeah, because it's hot, cold, cold hot, and cold. Um, uh, vacuum and outgassing. Um, a lot of electronics and many plastics as well. In a vacuum, they'll emit gases that will uh, disrupt the electronics, sometimes disrupt the motion of, uh, of the object in orbit. Okay. Um, and on top of that, radiation is one, but radiation isn't terrible because you can shield it. And more importantly, lifetime radiation impacts on month lifetimes, and sometimes we're only looking for a few weeks. Uh, okay. So when will launch? When will they launch? When they will will, uh, will they launch from the ISS? When will it be? Well, um, not all of them will be, but this TechEdSat yeah. will be launching sometime next month, hopefully. Ah, okay. In September. It'll be the first and the smallest in space. 
It'll be the first of six um, uh, launched off the space station, yes. Uh, Jap Japan, the Japanese space agency JAXA, has three payloads that, that they built, and then there are three others for everybody else. And is it the smallest satellite ever? In the no, no. Uh, in fact, I could show you, we have smaller ones um, that will be eventually the size of a chip. One, uh, or about two centimeters uh, square. It'll be a flat what, chip. What, what is the smallest satellite orbiting now in space? Oh, a CubeSat, uh, this okay, factor is yeah. about, yes. But there, there are many about the same size. Okay, but they're much more expensive. Yeah. On order, yeah, they're 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 still cheaper than the big ones. Yeah. They're not millions and millions of dollars. But much more expensive than those. Often, of the oftentimes same. they are, yes. Not all of them, but yes. All right. Where can we where can we observe the program? There's a website where we can take. Well, part. Um, if you do a search online for Tech Edsat T E C H E D S A T, you'll find it. Or you can email me, and I'll be happy to send uh, send you the links and uh, other information. All right. The final party is starting. Final party, yes. <laughs> so it's getting really loud. Matthew, thank you very much for coming. You're very uh, well, thank you for having me. Okay. Um, ja, vielen Dank. Das war DCGP live von der Campus Party Berlin. Uh, die letzte Abschlussveranstaltung beginnt da hinter mir. Ich danke ganz herzlich fürs Zugucken. Alle Videos, all videos will be live on dctp.tv. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Bye bye. Bye bye.